Hey everyone, welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. I'm going to be covering microeconomics today, part 8A, okay? So this is the first part of um, this two-part series, okay? Part 8A and 8B. Uh, 8A is going to be covering your total revenue and strategies for um, as, as the impact of your market outcomes, okay? What total revenue is and what are some strategies that um, producers may employ, okay? After knowing um, your PED, all that kind of thing stuff okay and then the second part 8b i'm going to be covering producing consumer surplus okay so make sure you stay tuned for both parts okay because they are both going to be very very important so jumping right in all right this is a two-part series like i've just said okay part 8a i'm going to be covering definition of total revenue okay this is pertaining to producers okay consumer extent expenditure versus producer revenue what is the difference? Are they the same thing? How PED, YD, XED affects total revenue? And then the strategies in order to uh, maximize profits. Right, for 8B, I'll go through consumer and producer surplus. I think that one will be a very, very short video because there isn't much you need to know. It's just mainly the areas in which they are to be defined. Alright, so let's just take a dive into this part, part 8A, alright? Consumer expenditure versus total revenue. What is the difference? What, uh, what are the similarities? Alright, you first need to know that total revenue equals to price times quantity. Okay, this is the, like the golden rule of econs. Everyone must know this. In order to find the revenue, you take price, you multiply it by quantity. It's basically the area under the demand and supply curve. That is your revenue. So the total revenue is the same as total expenditure. Okay, so now you know producer revenue is the same as pre uh, consumer expenditure. Why do I say this and why is it so that Econs has actually coined it as such? Okay, because when assuming everything constant, right? Assuming Cetris Paribus, whereby everything is remaining constant, when a consumer purchases a good for, let's say, $5, where does the $5 go to? Okay, assuming everything is held constant, it goes direct to the producer. As a result, this is the revenue that the producer will gain. Okay, so total revenue is for producers. Always remember that. Total expenditure or, or consumer expenditure is looking at consumers. Alright, so profit equals to total revenue minus total cost. Okay, I'll go through this in a later part um, of another video, right? Be when I'm going to be covering market structure. That is the part you should be looking out for, okay? Because within profits, okay, you can maximize profits. But at the same time, when you maximize profits, there are subnormal, normal, and supernormal profits. So you make sure you stay tuned to that, okay? That part will be coming out quite soon. Alright, so let's say. I have a change in price, okay? Whenever you see a, the question saying that there's a change in price, you're always going to be looking at PED, right? Because there's only three different types, right? There's going to be cost elasticity, YAD, and your know, income elasticity, and your price elasticity, right? So when you see a change in price, just match, ma match, make it, okay? It is obviously going to be, be referring to PED. Okay, so when there's a change in price, what actually happens is that it will affect the producer's revenue as well as the consumer's expenditure, okay? But... This will depend on the PED of the good. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, it means that um, depending on the PED of that certain good, okay, it will determine how much revenue and how much expenditure has been made. Okay, so how much do consumers have to pay as well as how much do producers reap as a revenue. Alright, so let's say if you are looking at a price elastic demand whereby PED more than one, okay, you remember that this means that when there's a change in price, there will be a more than proportionate increase in quantity demanded as I stated here okay as a result okay total revenue will increase when price falls okay the reason why is because when price falls there will be a more than proportionate increase in quantity demanded all right so essentially when there is a fall in price it leads to a more than proportionate increase in quantity demanded as such if you are assuming that everything is to the dollar sign right what will happen is that total revenue will definitely increase. Okay, the reason why is like we have gone through total revenue equals to price times quantity. So if let's say price goes down, but let's say quantity goes up more than proportionately, which means more than equals to, okay, I'm not sorry, more, not more than equals to, that means it's definitely more than, let's say that amount. Okay, your, your overall total revenue will actually rise. Okay, T. Alright, so hence producers should actually decrease price to increase revenue for such goods. Okay, on the other hand, a price inelastic demand, what happens is when I have got a fall in my price, okay, like we're using fall, okay, it will result in a less than proportionate decrease in quantity demanded. Uh, this should be an increase. 
yeah so this is wrong okay yeah see even i will say wrong okay so this should be a less than proportionate increase right remember because we throw back to the law of demand okay which states that there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded all right so this will actually be an increase i'm going to write the i over here increase okay so increase in quantity demanded but it's less than proportionate hence overall your total revenue will will, will still fall Okay, as I've stated here. So hence, producers will actually increase price for such price inelastic goods in order to increase revenue. All right, if that part was a bit confusing, okay, play back the video again. Make sure you go through it, understand it, okay, absorb it. All right, so evaluation of PED, okay, in each one of them, I'll have a bit of evaluation. Okay, it, firstly, it's not easy to actually identify or estimate the PED value. Okay, because there are changes in the economy all the time. Okay, so for example, a good which has once been priced inelastic, tomorrow it could be very elastic okay, because of, let's say, a sudden surge in substitutes. Okay, one more, the statutory perverse condition does not hold true in the real world. Okay, not everything is constant. Okay, some revenue may have to be charged as taxes as well. Taxes may be charged. Okay, and the firm's objective may be to maximize profits rather than total revenue. Okay, I'll go through this later on um, in another part of market structure as well. Okay, so if there's a change in income, what should a producer do? Okay, so when you have a change in income, you match it to your YED, right? Because income elasticity of demand. So YED has a very important effect on resource allocation and output so this is very very important you must remember these two um, terms okay it is very very um, impactful on resource allocation so what are the producers, producers going to re um, allocate resources to as well as how much to produce okay so a very high yed means that it's very very sensitive to a change in income okay so essentially there are two different cases okay when there's an economic boom and when there is an economic recession so these are the two main cases so when there's an economic boom it means that incomes are rising so this means that incomes are rising okay as a result firms should actually stock up on very 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 income elastic goods such as luxury goods so this is your yd more than one it's a positive income elastic good all right and so this is in the anticipation of a more than proportionate increase in quantity demanded which will increase your overall to total revenue okay so likewise okay uh over here you're not lo you're looking at um, um, PED, you're looking at YED. So when you're looking at income elastic goods, what happens is that an uh, increase in your, let's say your price, or let's say the amount of goods you have to stock up, okay, so not your price, remember, not, not looking at price here, okay, an increase in the quantity that you are, you are stocking up, okay, in terms of this income elastic good will lead to a more than proportionate increase in quantity demanded when your income rises. So this is a income elastic demand. Okay, on the other hand, um, during a recession, okay, firms should reduce the scale of production and increase advertising efforts for inferior goods. Okay, because like we've gone through, this is a negative YED, correct? So this means that when there is a fall in income, there will be a rise in quantity demanded for such goods. Hence, they can also possibly focus resources into exports into other countries which can yield a greater total revenue. Okay, so basically the evaluation for this is that companies actually need to focus on a product mix. So they need to have a mix of inferior and luxury goods in order to ensure that they can tight the different waves when there's economic recession or when there's an economic um, boom in the in the economy. Okay. So one more thing to take note, okay, is that the only variable that we're changing here is income. So do not bring in things like marketing strategies, discounts, okay, because these will mean that there will be a change in the price of the good. We're not looking at that. We're only looking at a change in income. That is the fixed factor that we're looking at. Okay, so what if there's a change in the price of different products? Okay, so XED is important for producers to estimate the effects Okay, the effects on demand of their products when prices of related goods change. Okay, so let's say if another good has an increase in price and, the, and their own good has a fall, okay, it shows that it could be a complement. Okay, so for example, we have, our first case here we're going to look at is high positive YED substitutes. Okay, so a fall in the price of good A will take away a significant market share from good B. Hence, good A is focused okay and more force okay to respond by dropping their prices so this will lead to a price war okay we'll learn more of this whole part in market structure and this is not desirable in the long run okay so good a okay can actually choose okay to focus on non-price competition right such as aggressive advertisements all that kind of stuff in order to reduce the xed or ced with respect to its rivals okay however xed could be low due to brand loyalty hence good a may choose to ignore the fall in price of good b Alternatively, substitutes can also con consider merging, okay? so to collude or that to um, basically f uh, form 
uh, basic acquire one either. Okay, so essentially over here we're looking at case for substitutes. Okay, let's say if uh, there's let's say good A, let's say Nike decides to have a fall in their price. Okay, this would mean that a lot of people who are once buying Adidas K okay, will actually transfer over to Nike shoes. Okay, as a result your your original one your nike k may actually be me i mean sorry adidas k may actually want to instead drop their prices as well k but a price war is not desirable okay price war is basically when prices of each company keep on dropping in the market which is not good okay so ultimately end of the day what may happen k is that um if let's say xcd is low k both companies may choose to ignore each other but if it is not k if they are very high k like substitutes k they will actually um, focus on non-price competition in order to gain back that brand loyalty. Okay, so what if it's a high negative um, XCD, okay, your compliments. So if you're looking at compliments, okay, firms may want to collaborate with each other in order to jointly promote their products. Okay, so joint promotion can frequently be seen among airlines, tour agencies, your telcos, okay, all that kind of stuff. Okay, whereas there's also a loss leader um, strategy, right, producers of, let's say, a lower price good like printers. Okay, they um uh, sorry, I mean the, the higher price good of the compliments, okay? They may choose to actually lower their price such that the other compliment will have will see a rise okay, in its demand. So things like your ink cartridges. Okay, so it kinda like works hand in hand, but one of them takes the lead instead. Okay, so for compliments, okay, producers may instead think about combining as well. Okay, they may want to collaborate. Okay, because they don't want to, to fight over each other. There's no point, right? They're there to actually help each other grow. Okay, if one good it has an increase in um, um, your demand, the other one will also have. Okay, so that is what they can do. They can collaborate instead. So that is what XED will help producers to identify whether they want to collaborate with a company or not, or whether they may want to aggress, uh, um, invest in non-price competition. Okay, we'll go through more of this later on in the market structure. So this is just a very brief outline. Understand what it is all about. Um, and make sure you know how to apply it to the context of the question. Okay, so all in all, okay, you basically need to understand how to derive total revenue. Okay, explain how the PDYD actually affects the total revenue earned by producers. Okay, so does it lead to a rise or a fall in total revenue? And then as well as the strategies that they can employ, okay, based on the different um, PDYD and XCD. And lastly, um, this will tend to come out as essay questions. Okay, so this part of the the... Um, syllabus, okay, is actually very, very simple, right? Part 8A of this entire series, okay, basically just wants you to understand how does PD, YD, and XCD affect the decisions of producers um, in order to actually employ the right strategies to gain the most um, total revenue out of anything. Okay, so depending on the PD, YD, XD, that will be what you will be focusing on. Okay, so if you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section below. Okay, be sure to subscribe and like this video. Okay, you guys help me out a lot. Um, the next video, part 8B, will be on consumer and producer surplus. So stay tuned for that video as well. Okay, I'll be releasing it shortly after this one. Um, if not, I will see you guys in that one. Till then, peace out.